Good morning. Um, this is where we were in the last clip. We've axed it out and uh, it's now time to take a knife to it. It's a couple of things. You can see that we've got quite a little bit of meat on the back here, but that's okay because we'll be going across to the spoon mule later and a draw knife will just shift that out really quickly. Um, the inside uh, will rough that out on the spoon mule as well using the bank gouge. Uh, the first thing I want to do though is define uh, the bowl rim and the handle. I want I want to get it looking reasonable. So just start by cleaning up the edges, taking off any obvious nasty bits. If you're just starting out spoon carving, um, I strongly recommend that you take some time and learn the knife grips. Learn the knife grips so that you don't have to think about them, uh, that your hands just get used to doing it. Um, uh, knife grips are the most efficient way to use your energy and the safest. If you use the knife grips and use them correctly, don't feel inclined to go getting creative. <laughs> um, you'll um, your hands won't get as tired and you'll do a, a much better job. So we we'll just get in this corner, clean out the rubbish. You don't want your eye distracted by extraneous pieces, lumps and bumps and stuff like that. Um, this is a, a handy little back, little cut. This is a reversed assisted pull grip. You're, you're actually using the heel of your hand rather than your, your uh, fingers to apply the pressure. I saw Jared Dahl in a in one of his videos do that and I thought ooh I'm gonna use that always when you're weighing up always look at it from different angles the light can play tricks with you. So if you reverse the spoon and look at it from a, a different angle with the different light on it, you will be able to see things that you couldn't see from the other angle. Look straight down on top, you can tell this bottom end's a lot thicker than the top end, so We'll take, we'll take a bit off the back because again that can distract your eye. Getting, getting the transition here Everybody struggles with that one. Getting the line up so that there's no step. Um, 
it's easier on a dry piece of wood so don't get too fussed about it too soon and it's something that just there's no real way you can teach that certainly not in a video third hand as it were but, um, it's something you just have to practice and you get it eventually see that little little edge there just there it is gone got it uh, take a bit more off the back here Don't try to take too much in one cut. You have to apply too much force. And if things come unstuck, that force is going to go somewhere. And it's a good chance it will be into your leg or your arm. Safety. Having said that, you know, um, Yeah, it looks a little weird there. Maybe a little too thin, but we will see. Things will become clear in the fullness of time. If you if that happens, if you end up with a bit that's a bit too thin, um. Just be careful when you start doing things like squeezing and, you know, squeezing with your hand as you're cutting like I am now, because you can break it. But if that's thin there, as I said earlier, if this is thin there, then we need to add a little bit more here. So we're not going to go too far downhill there. Uh, look down at that way that needs to come out there a little bit so what I'm doing is I'm not I'm not teaching I'm not trying to teach you how to do any particular thing as such this is just what I do this is this is how I carve a spoon and everybody's process is different so you'll develop your own alright that's reasonable now we'll leave that for now but now what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to do this top as I said earlier we've got a nice you know a, a, a quite a a sharp little crank in there, a little space. We want to get a nice smooth line throughout the whole thing. I, I like it to be a continuous with no real sharp changes of direction. I don't like, uh, I'm not particularly a fan of big bumps on the front here so that the spoon dips down then comes up and and does them ones. It, it's very dramatic and it looks good on other people's spoons, but I don't like it. What I do like is I like to take this down, hollow that out so that it comes down, it swoops down, comes up and just then drops down into there. This is where you do it. If you're going to end up with facets on the on the top of the handle, they actually start here. It's a you could almost say it's a bit like chess. You're, um, you're thinking ahead. It's going to be a while till we get to finishing this bit here on top. Um, but it starts now. So I'm going to... Cut down. I told you I was going to give my secrets away, but... I noticed this when I was starting, yeah that's alright, that uh, I had particular questions, I wanted to know how do you do that, how do you do that, 
Nobody would tell me. Now what I've done is I've I've cut down there. If, I, if you can see, oh, it's hard to figure this one out. Cut down to there, scooped, come up, and then run down to the back of the bowl. But I've kept that. I've run that little bevel down. This is how you get that that bevel that runs right the way down the handle into the the neck here. It's, it starts right at this point. Do the other side. Pull that down. Run that right down there. That'll do. And now, and you should end up with a ridge with just your pencil line, just an, enough of a ridge for your pencil line to sit on, because we're going to take that out very shortly. Check. Look down the back of the handle and just rotate it side to side and see whether the low point is in the same spot on both sides and move up. Is that spot the same size? Is, is it there? This is so you work down the handle and make sure that both sides run in tandem. We'll take this top piece out. Cut down, cut in. I'm looking at the depths. If that's the same and it's not far off, probably just a little bit deeper on here. Then if you watch the, the, the thickness of these two facets, it'll tell you how deep you are and whether you're level on top. You can see that this side is slightly wider, so I'm just going to We're just starting to get that little hollow down in there, if I can get it in there, and then it's coming up. That's good enough for now. I've just, I've just got it looking like how I'm going to want it later. Don't have to go any further with that yet. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go and do some work on the um, on the spoon mule. So it's going to get a bit wobbly for a minute, guys. All right. Now, I think you can see that. That'll do. Oh, good morning, how are you? Um, probably can't see as good as you, you would like, but there is a video clip uh, on YouTube that talks about this part of thing. It's called uh, Gouge and Draw Knife by me. So, putting in the, uh, put it in there. I'm going to use Bent gouge, a number seven sweet, I think it is, maybe a six. This is a dry. These can be bought online. You can get them from woodtamer.com. Look him up, the wood tamer. He's got lots of nice tools. He's in uh, Australia. The way to hold one of these. Put it over your 
index finger, wrap it round, hold it with your thumb and index finger, and then wrap your other fingers around it like that. Okay, okay so it's, it's sitting in there. Such that, no matter how hard I try, I can't cut myself. And then I'm just going to scoop it in. Cut from one side Turn it round You always rest your arms and use your wrist, you do not use your arms. If you want to pierce internal organs with a chisel, that's the way you do it. You scoop and just use your wrists. Right, that's probably as much as I need to do and just take some out at the back of the bowl here. Taking that out. Um, yeah. We'll also at this point I think take some of the meat off the back of there with the draw knife. Riser block that lifts it up. As I said, if you want to know more about draw knives, gouges, and how they're used on a spoon mill, go on to YouTube, search for Gouge and Draw Knife by me. I talking about this is going on to YouTube it'll be next on the list or something like that now it's just for roughing aha uh -huh. back to the knife and the cup of tea. So what I've done that for, why did I hollow that out before, you know, doing this? Again, as I said earlier, why cut through, you know, a whole heap of wood when you don't have to? Some people will define this edge by leaving the bowl full and just carving along the edge and drawing with lines as, as my teacher Jeff Dunn said to me drawing with lines um, I, I don't I'd, I'd rather just whack on there get rid of that and then I'm off and running so that facet that came down there on that side run it into the back of the bowl and then scoop it down this side run that facet down scoop it down take that out the back there then check it on the side and check that is that a nice curve is one side the same as the other it's looking all right coming back Getting this is, I might sit from around this way.
see, that's why we didn't want to take too much off the back too soon. Nearly just left just enough. Now I'm just going to find that edge down so I know where I, I can go and where I can't go. Before we go any further on the back here, I keep disappearing, I'm sorry. Before we go any further on the back here, we're going to define the inside of the bowl. particularly the depth. Keep your thumb out of the way. The most common cut if you cut yourself is your thumb. Um, yes. Right, we're getting close now. This is when, this is when you start feeling more than you carve. Good rule of the game when you get when you get to this point. Feel a lot, carve a little. Now, we don't want to be too deep because it's an eating spoon. We don't want to be too deep. I'm looking at the gap underneath that handle there. Don't want to be too deep because it's an eating spoon and if it's too deep then your top lip can't clean the bottom of the bowl and people start going <laughs> which is no way to behave at the dinner table but they'll say it's not my fault there's this damn spoon Yes, come on. We're going to come back and and have a closer look at this shortly. I just want to get that down. It's 
getting there now. Take a little bit more off this side. That's it. Remember what uh, I said in the other clip. We want our bowl to appear light. Add a bit of elegance. A nice aesthetic. Light's terrible in here today because of the rain. Overcast. It's not so much that there's not enough of it, but it's always nice to have a fairly strong slanting light so that as the light comes in from one direction, it will light one side up and throw the other side into shadow so that you can clearly see your edge coming along here. Right, the back. I'm going to take off that big lump to start with, have a feel, I've only ever carved through the bowl once, um, I don't know why, I just wasn't paying attention, I was having Far too much fun feeling the knife going through the wood, shaving, shaving, shaving. End result, next thing you know, I've shaved right through and it's no longer <laughs> a spoon, it's a stick with a hole in it. Now because we've got perhaps some heavy work to do on the back of the handle and there'll be a bit of pushing and pulling and squeezing, I'm not going to take that bowl any finer at the moment. I'm going to leave that quite thick. Now. It's here where we're going to start thinking about how this edge gets into this, this surface, gets into this surface. How do they meet there? So stop, we have a think. That's going to be our top edge there. So this is going to come up to there. So it's going to run down. Um, and then it's got to get into there. Uh, one way would be, remember how I said we don't like chunky bits behind the bowl here? So let's, one way or the other, that's got to come out. So let's take that out now. We know what that's gonna what that's got to do. So and it's at this point you go, ooh. There's a facet on the back of the bowl. Ooh, do I like it? Shall I keep it? We don't know. We might have already carved. Half a dozen spoons with facets on the back of the bowl. 
and uh, we might say, no, we're going to just round the bowl out and make it look nice. But what do you think? Do you think we should uh, leave the facets in? Why not? This thing about facets, you can always take them out. But if you're going to do a facet, you can see that they're nowhere near mirror image. This one's got to come over into the middle there, so we'll do that. That one's got to go up there. So we'll do that and look, centre line here, running down, use the grain to guide you, if it's not too wonky, okay. Um, look down this side, this side's a lot deeper than that side already, you can see. So we'll take a bit more out of there. I've gone too far, we're at 32 minutes. And we're going to leave it there. We're going to leave it there and come back in the next clip. Thank you.